Now we turn to our regular Thursday night segment on black girls and women who have gone missing across the United States. Tonight we are looking at the case of Tony Turner. Tony was 22 years old when she disappeared from her house in Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh Squirrel Hill neighborhood in December of 2019. Tony is five foot two, 130 pounds, and has medium length black hair. Joining me tonight is Tony's sister, Sydney Turner, along with Natalie Wilson from the Black and Missing Foundation. Thank you both for coming on tonight. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Sydney, Sydney, let me start with you. Um, tell us more about your sister and, and about the last time you saw her. Um, so Tony was a very vivacious uh, little sister of mine. She was an artist. She took many forms of art. The one that she was employed in was making jewelry and making ceramics. Um, she was a great person to be around. Um, the last time I saw her was the day she went missing, December 30th, 2019. Um, we were texting. She was just at a local tea shop. Um, and then two hours later, that's whenever she went missing. Yeah. Now, I was told that she was going through a bit of a, a difficult time before she disappeared. Can you tell us anything about that? Of course. So I would say that she was going through the very normal ups and downs of being a young adult, finding her place in the world. Um, she worked like 40 plus hours a week. That was really draining on her. Um, so she was just trying to figure out what was the balance for living the most fulfilling life. Um, also going through some inner issues that she had through like just trauma, like trauma that we all can experience. So she was working through that. Um, but she was like in a high point, like she was in a plateau, very sad, but she was coming out of that and like seeing the light again. So her going missing on that day was very shocking, um, very surprising, uh, despite her, you know, having depressive episodes before. Now we reached out to um, Pittsburgh police today and they said that the investigation mm -hmm. into Tony's disappearance is ongoing, but there's no new information. Uh, tell us about your interactions with police. How have they been involved in, and are you satisfied with their efforts? So when it was all happening initially, um, I was satisfied because I had never had any relationship with working with the police before, but you know, it's been, well, she went to missing December 30th of 2019, so it's been over a year. And I have to say, I am not satisfied. It's been dissatisfactory. Um, I feel as though they could have mm -hmm. pushed more people um, to do more, like really considered her being a missing person in all ways. Like, could she have been abducted or kidnapped? But I think they really leaned on this idea that she, like, committed suicide and jumped off of the bridge. And so I feel like a lot of people um, were not, weren't actually persecuted as strongly as they should have. As my, someone on my fine Tony team told me, a vet, like imagine if it was a white girl who was missing and a black man was a suspect or a black woman, how would the police treat that person? And my mm -hmm. sister being black, I didn't want to bring it to a racial place because I was so grateful for all the support from my community. My community has been wonderful. Never worked with the police before. But when you put the racial lens on it, it's like, were they withholding some of their power because my sister was mm -hmm. black? Because they could get away with it? Because they could say, oh, she killed herself? I, I don't know. But, you know, there were some people that I think could have been, we, they could have been persecuted further and they just got slap on the wrist i see well you know what uh, when you're trying to find a loved one it definitely takes a community um and and I, you mentioned the community mm -hmm. coming out and supporting um in this effort to to find your sister um there there was a walk and other events to uh, raise awareness can you tell us about those efforts Oh, there were so many events. You know, there were times I was really uh, consumed by grief, but my fine Tony team, they really like kept doing things. So people, other a lot of people love Tony. So a lot of people need to find ways to grieve communally, um, even during the pandemic. Um, so we had walks, we had a dance party because Tony was a famous dancer in Pittsburgh, uh, a little bit of a famous dancer in Pittsburgh. And we raised money for Tony and for the Black and Missing Foundation. Um, we had a, 
I think two like spiritual gatherings where people could just grieve and sob and like let go of any trauma they have been holding from someone being left or leaving them either from violence or from like a terrible situation like this. So a lot of events have taken place uh, over the past year and a half for Tony and for the community and the people who love her. Now, you mentioned that Tony is an artist um, and some of her friends and colleagues from the arts community have been active in this search as well. And I want to play a message one of them recorded about Tony and then um, talk about her, that aspect of her life. Hey, everybody, thank you for listening um, tonight and being a part of this um, ongoing effort to bring Tony Turner back home. Tony's a beloved part of our community. She's a sister, she's a friend, she's an artist, she's a dancer, she's a teaching artist. She's a teacher, she's a daughter, she's a sister, she's an auntie, she's a everything. Tony's our sister, and we're here to ask you that if you've seen her, if you thought you saw her, if you have any information, great or small, to please contact law enforcement because we really need her back. You know, we need her back right away. That, that was such a sweet video. Um, tell us more about mm -hmm. Tony's passion for art. So she, she was the kid in my family, me and my big sister, she would be drawing on the walls and our mom would come home and be like, why won't you stop? Please stop drawing on the walls. But she just had a, I guess it was a ferocious appetite for art. She just couldn't stop. Every medium was her playground, whether it be my mom's kitchen wall <laughs> or it be, um, drawing on skateboards, painting, um, mm -hmm. sketching with charcoal, pastels, making jewelry. Um, she even got into like the carpentry equipment, like using a chainsaw and things like that, or a handsaw, a buzzsaw. So any way that she could art, she would do it. And that was also a Natalie, mural no. painted by, oh. oh, sorry. No. Oh, no, no, Sydney, go ahead, please. Okay. It was a mural painted by Marseille and uh, Sandy. So that was a mural made for Tony, but not made by Tony. It's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. And, and Natalie, I want to bring you in. Um, you've mm -hmm. helped draw attention to so many cases of missing black girls. And as we've reported, two girls um, we've recently featured have been reunited with their families. How important is it to bring media attention to these types of cases? Okay, media attention is very important and intense early media coverage. It ensures that our community is is looking for the missing individual. And of course, it increases the chance of a recovery. And media attention also forces law enforcement to add resources to the case. And my PR strategy at the Black and Missing Foundation is to have equal media coverage across the board by saturating our local and national media markets so that our missing can be household names too. Now in a case like Tony's or any missing person's case, what are the first set of things that you know parents, friends, family should do? Okay, well, the first thing that should be done is to file a missing persons report with the local law enforcement officials. And when a child goes missing, law enforcement is required by federal mandate to take that report immediately and enter that child's information to the National Crime Information Center. We also ask families to keep a log of everyone that they speak with about the case. And of course, contact family and friends. Um, be sure to reach out to them because they have maybe have been in contact with that missing person. And we also ask families to look at the missing person's social media pages for their last post. Is there any information about their plans and even their state of mind? And look to see if they received any harassing or strange communications from others. And as difficult as it can be, it's also necessary to check with hospitals, with jails, with, with the morgue, um, to see if the missing person is there. 
And of course, register the missing person with organizations such as the Black and Missing Foundation. And if it's a missing child, to also contact the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children as quickly as possible. And for families searching for someone with mental illnesses, they can also contact the National Alliance of Mental Illness, and they provide resources as well. And lastly, we ask families to create a one-page flyer with the missing individual's information. Definitely include a current picture, their full name, their height, weight, age, um, a photo of a vehicle or license plate if they were driving, the place last seen, and the phone number for the detective assigned to the case. Now, please remember, do not put your information on there, your personal cell phone number or your email address on the flyer. You can definitely go to the Black and Missing Foundation, our website. We have a template there that can help you create a flyer and you can share that information on your social media platform as well as with, as well as with local media outlets. Such important information. Thank you so much for that. Sydney Turner, uh, sister of Tony Turner and Natalie Wilson from the Black and Missing Foundation. Thank you both for joining me tonight. Thank you for having us. More Making the Case.